What's up, Melanated family? This is your boy Harrison Mann bringing you a brand new episode of my show, the Melanated Convo Podcast. Happy to be here. Good to see everybody. How's everybody doing today? Let me get everything pulled up, get everything pulled up so I can get this thing popping, family. You know what I mean? If this is your first time tuning into the show, this is the Melanated Convo Podcast, a real cool way for saying black conversations, you feel me? So we talk about relationships, we talk about, uh, we dip into politics a little bit, we talk about what goes on as far as police brutality, we talk about how our people are treated, we talk about um, what goes on in the school system, just all conversations, black folks, right? In an attempt, really, just to give everybody a better understanding of what we go through. For some black people out there who may not be too keen on black struggle, I like to talk about news stories and things like that that can put a fire under your ass a little bit, you know what I mean? To make you get come to grips with where we stand in this country, you know what I mean? And and talking about race, talking about what we go through as far as race relations are concerned, just so everybody know, there's nothing wrong with that. Don't be, people shame you sometime when you want to speak up for your people. People shame you sometime when you want to make it a point to talk about how we're treated in this society. And there's nothing wrong with that, family. Until this shit is fair, all of us should be upset about what we see. So I talk about news stories in an attempt to piss you off so you can be aware of what's going on. And from that from that anger, I want that to lead into you feeling like you need to do something. Not on no violent shit. Not on no, I'm going to be a vigilante. I'm going I'm to I'm be a vigilante and go kill somebody or hurt somebody. We're not on that. We're talking about empowering black folks. What ways in particular can you empower the people around you? You feel me? So that's what we do on the show. And also on the show, so we talk about news stories. We talk about black businesses. We have what's called here a black business spotlight where we talk about different black businesses in the community. Um, you know, I like to give a shout out to those who are as professional as possible. And I always say, man, the tiebreaker is the black business, right? So you can know of people who have a black business, but they need to be professional. And the tiebreaker is always that you're black. So I can find the products and services that I tell you guys about. We can find these products and services at white companies, at Arab companies, where whatever the case may be, right? But the tiebreaker is always that somebody looks like us. So we, we need to make it a habit of, of appreciating people who sell goods and services, but also treat them with respect. Like don't have no high acts no high ass expectation just because they black. So if they don't give you a discount or some shit you order come late, like sometimes you got to let that ride. You feel me? Sometimes you got to be a little more understanding because I know a lot of people who are willing to support a black business, but once some shit go wrong, right? Once you don't get your order on time or once you sense a small hint of unprofessionalism, now all of a sudden you run in telling everybody that's why I don't fuck with black businesses. That's why I don't rock with black folks. Stop all that shit. Like a lot of us are just now getting into being business owners and having the proper business acumen. Sometimes you have to shoot your people a little bell because we new to this shit. Like a lot of us don't come from money. So if you don't come from money and you starting your own business, it's going to be some hiccups during that process, right? So I like to talk about black businesses and give them some love. And also on the show, every show, we have a topic of the show, family. Typically the topic ranges from relationships with our kids, relationships with our partners, different things we see going on in society, different things we do wrong to each other as black folks. We like to cover the whole gambit. So today, because somebody um, who watched last week's show hit me, at the, the topic we were talking about last week was, you know, we have a lot of young men who attempt to be involved in street shit, but that's not really in them, right? So it's last week's topic was about helping your kids find out who they really are, opposed to um, being a follower, opposed to being in a particular environment and feel you have to participate in these things because you're in this environment, right? So last week's show was about that, but the brother hit me and he said, Harrison, look, and this was a man, you know what I mean? He hit me and he was like, look, man, can you, next week, can you talk about Black men and he meant black women who don't have their fathers, right? So fatherless women, right? Fatherless women in our community. How do we conduct ourselves with them? How do we pursue a relationship with somebody who only was raised with one parent in the home? Like we need to be aware of the differences that may occur because of this, right? Now, he wanted me to speak to the fact that um, how does he deal with a woman who 
may not have had a father around or some type of strong male influence. And I'm going to talk about that. But also, we need to talk about dudes who didn't have a daddy in the home. You see what I'm saying? Because if you a dude who have a woman and she didn't have a daddy and you didn't have a daddy, y'all got to sit down and talk about some shit. You know what I mean? It's going to be some role reversals and it's going to be some role establishing if you've never seen it. Like, we need to be aware of that. If you're a man or a woman and you've never seen two people in a relationship happy, two people in a relationship working together, then how do you learn how to do that, right? So we're going to talk about that later on in the show. How do you learn how to be a man in a relationship when you've never seen one? Can we be honest about that? Like, I know at, at men, we're extremely prideful. We... um are, we are ego driven at times, but that's a question, family. <laughs> you need to ask yourself. You got a woman, you're trying to build a home with a woman and children. How do you do that if you've never seen it? You read a book about it, you know an uncle who had a relationship, you know a family member who, what's your model for success when it comes to relationships, right? So later on in the show, we're going to talk about that because it's important that we dig into that. So, daddy list dating. All of us who didn't have a daddy, how the hell are you faring in a relationship with two people in the home um, when you didn't necessarily have that? You feel me? So, first things first, family, let's get into the news stories. We'll talk about that topic at the end of the show. Right now, let's get into the news. Well, I'm sorry. First, let's get into the black businesses. We do something called a black business spotlight that I just spoke to you about. Let's jump into it. Also, if you know anybody, family, please do me a favor. If you know anybody who has a black business, they have a website, they're professional, please send me their information. Right now, I'm not charging anybody anything. We want to get, I, in my opinion, the more successful black businesses that are out there, the better for all of us. The more you'll be able to hire my son, my auntie, my cousin, my friends, you'll be established financially. So when it comes to fighting a lot of the things we see that we don't like in society, money matters. You know what I mean? So let's try to support qualified black business. So let's get into it. The first black business is from a brother because I sent out an email maybe, uh, shit, this was nine, ten months ago. I do it every so often, but I, I, I sent out an email several months ago letting everybody know I am going to be advertising black businesses. Can you please let me know of some businesses, right? So I had some people reach out to me. I have a brother named, where is his name? I have a brother named Matt Prestbury, right? Matt Prestbury, who has a great organization called Black Fathers Foundation. You should look that up, actually. You should go to Facebook and look up Black Fathers Foundation. I'm all for black men attempting to help their community. I have an organization myself called Melanated Fathers of America, so I'm, I'm always behind any brothers who are out here trying to help the community. So he has an organization called Black Fathers Foundation, and to support his foundation, he's selling clothes, right? So if you go to blackfathersfoundation.shop, blackfathersfoundation.shop, you can find the brother's clothing. He has Black Father Foundation sweaters, t-shirts, face masks, sweaters for women, right? And it looks like he's selling these items just to, you know, create some revenue for the organization so they can do what they got to do in the community. And I reached out to the brother too, so I can try to interview him on the show because I'm always fascinated by that, man. Everybody need to put their hand in and help. You know what I mean? Some of us get into a habit of, um, how can I put it? Observing the work that's being done and we all got to help out. You don't got to start an organization. You don't got to start. You don't got to <laughs> become like a conscious ass black person that always had your fist in the hair, always marching in. No, figure out your lane. Figure out how you can help. You see people going through things. You see people in your community going through things. How can you help out? Is that by being a mentor? Is that by just lending a hand wherever you can? Is that by spreading positive messages on social media? Whatever you could do, right? So I, I, I applaud this brother for attempting to help our community. So we need to help him out by supporting his business, right? So go to blackfathersfoundation.shop, blackfathersfoundation.shop. You can find the clothing the brother has there. Again, it says uh, 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 you're supporting their organization by making a purchase. So go there today, family. Blackfathersfoundation.shop. Now, the next bit, the next and last business I'm gonna talk about, that I'm going to talk about is a sister name, again, because I, I posted something on Facebook several months ago 
asking people if they knew of a black business to tell me and I'll support the business. So I go back to that list often when I can't find stuff or when I'm in need of, you know what I mean? I go back to that list and it's several, several people who've reached out to me, which I appreciate. And I'm definitely going to try to get to everyone. Now, this sister's name is Chanel Walker and she has a website called I am so, so shit. I am so, so Chanel. Now, on this website, you can find a couple different things, right? She has clothing. She has a lot of clothing for women, a lot of sexy dresses. She has T-shirts. She has uh, sweaters. A lot of different clothes that I think women who are into fashion would definitely appreciate. So, um, a lot of clothing. Um, let me see here. Plus size clothing for bigger women. There's a lot of denim on the website. So actually, in you know, every time I look at different black businesses that sell things, um, you know, it intrigues me when it looks as if they're extremely professional. They have a lot of things to choose from. So if you go to the website, and this is for women, fellas, if you go to the website, I am so so Chanel.com, again, after I post this video, I'll post the website and everything under this uh, this video. Yep, you're right. Uh, you're right, Cash. It's something. Now, Cash, I tell people too, just on a quick side note. One of the most revolutionary things you can do as a black man, a black man or a black woman, right? <laughs> before you go out into the community and help out, before you volunteer, before you go march, right? The first revolutionary act is raising your damn kids. <laughs> That's the first thing we need from all y'all. The first thing we need from everybody in our community is take raising your kids serious. Take grooming serious. Take school serious. Take speech serious right like take the parenting process extremely serious that'll help all of us think about that for a minute right because we look at people outside of our community as the pariahs of where we are where we are today and that's true systematic racism has done a number on all of us it's affecting us still to this day can nobody tell me it's not but we have a say so in this what are you going to do about that how are you going to learn to navigate some of these pitfalls so you can be successful as possible so your kids can be as successful as possible just because racism is here doesn't mean you can't maneuver around it and it's up to you as a parent to teach your kids how to maneuver around it as i go into some of the news stories today you'll see and i'll continue to emphasize how we're treated by this system and if you send a unequipped black child out into the world they're going to be treated like an adult i'm I, i'm going to get into that on some of the news stories, but understand who we are in this country, family. If your child is unprepared for the society outside, they won't have a lot of opportunities to make mistakes. They're not like white children where they can make these mistakes and they'll get hit on the, they'll get slaps on the wrist. Hell no. Your 12 year old son gonna get treated like an adult when he outside by authority and everybody that's around. You feel me? So it's important that we understand how we can help our children, how we can help our family. So back, back to the black businesses. I am so so Chanel is the name of the company now not only does she sell clothes family she sells eyelashes you know in our community a lot of women love doing things <laughs> I don't want to be mean doing things to their face they they love fake hair fake nails fake eyelashes I have a opinion about that to a degree but all in all if you're doing something to make yourself look better I'm rocking with that. You know what I mean? So on those sisters' website, all my sisters, do me a favor. Go to IamSoChanel.com. This sister has clothes. This sister has um, eyelashes. She has something called, hold on one second. I want to, because I don't know shit. <laughs> I don't know shit about eyelashes. She says she has three mink lash strips. That sounds very nice, right? <laughs> I don't want to mess with the promo for the sister, but please, y'all, go to the website, IamSoChanel.com, 3D mink lash strips. That sounds exquisite, right? That sounds like some real nice shit. I have no idea what that is, but it sounds nice, right? So go to the sister's website, IamSoChanel.com, lashes, clothes. It's like a clothing boutique, so it's like she has specific clothing, and then it, then it kind of goes out of season, and she gets more. She kind of mentions that on the website. Plus sizes for all my bigger sisters out there. Please go to I Am So Chanel today, right? All right. Hey, sis. All right. So now let's get to these news stories, family. Let's figure out what the hell is going on with our people. You know what I mean? That's why we do the news stories. Some of y'all may not read the news. 
Some of y'all may not look at a newspaper. Some of y'all don't want to watch CNN, which be bullshit most of the time. Come on to your boy. You know what I mean? We talk about the things that matter. Now, we don't dig deep in. Well, I talk about politics a little bit just from my purview and what I know about it. But I think we need to always look at more of a local level when it comes to what we're concerned with. Like before you guys are just heavily involved in politics and heavily involved in the Democratic and Republic shit that just goes back and forth and it's like a cycle of fucking liars at this point. Before you do all that, get into what's happening with your people specifically. Like before we can, before I, this is my opinion, y'all. Before you like, <laughs> this may sound fucked up, but whatever. Before you love this country, like before you become this patriot who loves everything about America and want to be involved in the America populace and how everything works. We are American, but you black before you American. Did you know that? <laughs> so act like it. Shit, care about what's going on with your people before we look at what's going on in, in, in the greater scheme of things, which we should be aware of everything. Don't get me wrong, but love who you are. You feel me? Now, let's get into the news stories. First news story I want to talk about, and I've been speaking about this news story. This is like my third time talking about it. There's a 15-year-old boy named Kawan Charles who was found dead in November in, in Louisiana. Um, and basically, a white woman and um, her 17-year-old son picked up Kawan from his home. Ultimately, I'll spare you all the details, but ultimately, Kwan ended up dead in a sugar cane field. Um, the mom said she didn't know what happened to him. The white mother acted as if, well, she didn't report him missing until three days later. So a really fishy story. But the woman, after I think uh, the family had to do like a, uh, um, the family had to do a um, independent investigation into what happened. I think that's what spawned this woman being arrested. But I'm happy, y'all, that this family and this young man can begin to get some kind of closure, right? So let me read the story about what uh, was going on. Now, a Louisiana woman was charged Tuesday in connection to the death of Kawan Bobby Charles, a black teen whose body was found in a sugar cane field in November. Janet Irvin, 37, faces charges of contributing to the delinquency of a minor and failure to report a missing child. Now, we'll talk about that in a second because those seem like extremely minor charges. Because, again, the family... Look, if the family didn't have an independent investigator look into things, we would not know what happened to this black baby. For some reason in this country, even still to this day, a black life... when we Because... <laughs> Black Lives Matter seemed like such a, sim a simple statement. You know, I'm, as an organization, there's definitely things I may not agree with when it comes to Black Lives Matter. But the statement that we should matter, that's so prevalent, and, and, and it has been prevalent for, for generations, family. Because again, this young 15-year-old black boy, in my opinion, because he's an African, because he's an African, they don't really give a shit. The family tried to go to the police like, hey, my son is missing. They was like, maybe he had a football game or something. We don't know. Get out of here. You know what I mean? So how black life is treated in America, um, it's beyond not fair. And again, it's up to all of us to express our concern about these things and speak out when we can, right? Now, just to give you guys some more information about the story here, the 15-year-old boy was allegedly picked up from his house, out he from picked up outside of his father's house in Baldwin, Louisiana. This was on October 30th. It said that he was picked up by two people. Um, the family said it was Urban, the white mother, and her 17-year-old son, and they picked him up from his home. Now, police had previously released a video showing the moment they said Charles voluntarily left his home with the two people. The video appears to show someone sitting on the edge of a road in front of a home as a silver car drives by the person, well, whatever. So they bring him, the lady and her son, bring him to her house, and that's where things kind of get fishy because the son says, basically, the Charles was asleep. He woke up out of his sleep crying, like swinging at people. The white kid's like, hey, man, what's wrong? He says, I'm going to go kill myself. So he leaves the house and apparently goes to kill herself. Now, things were really fishy because the mom, a, an adult, is basically saying the young man was high off hallucinogens, right? Now, the independent report came back that he was smoking weed. You know what I mean? Smoking weed and maybe had a little alcohol in the system. So I think this is what prompted um, police to arrest this woman. 
And this is a good thing, family. The charges that she's getting charged with seems like more of a slap on a wrist than anything. Hopefully, this leads to a bigger investigation so she can go to jail. But for in America, um, white women are always seem like they they're always portrayed like the victims, even when they do shit wrong, right? Because history matters. Family, that's why I have the History Matters section on my YouTube page. A lot of black men throughout history have been lynched, have been killed, simply because a white woman lied. We need to be, we need to understand that, family. Like, white women in America, they can do no harm damn near. Yeah, they go to jail. Yeah, they do crimes and they get reprimanded. Yeah, but it's not that simple. It don't happen that simple. You see what I'm saying? So that's why I'm happy for social media and I'm happy for all these different platforms where people can come out and talk because a lot of times this is how these people end up going to jail is when the streets start talking, when the people start talking. You know what I mean? Because the authority in most cities in America, I just don't have a lot of confidence in police departments, in authority figures. Like our relationship with this country is fucked up, y'all. Like we need to be aware of that. Like I, listen, the coronavirus, the new president, I wish I can cut on my television, any news channel, I wish I can cut on my television and believe everything I'm being told. But I don't trust none of these motherfuckers, right? So that leaves me in a type that leaves me in a quandary because <laughs> I want to think coronavirus is real. I want to think I need to wear this mask because I'm going to harm my auntie or my uncle or somebody that may be a little sickly or have any pre-existing conditions. I want to believe that wearing this mask is going to protect y'all. I want to believe that. I want to believe the numbers they report on the news, but I don't trust America, man. Not at all. Based on how much they lie and how deceitful they are, but then I have to factor in who I am in this system, then I'm black. So, you know what I mean? I want to just take the vaccine. I don't want to trip off no vaccine and no, I don't want to trip off none of this shit. I just want to go with the flow, but you can't, in this country, if you do that, you're going to end up in the bottom of a ditch somewhere if you just go with the flow. You have to be aware. That's why I do this show. That's why I have my platform. We need to be aware, family. If you're a black person in America and all you care about is shaking your ass, if all you care about is entertainment, if all you care about is, look, family, Use both sides of your brain. You have to be able to have fun and to release and you had a hard day at work today. I understand all that shit. But you also got to make it a point to care about your people. You also got to make it a point to to do things, to feed your mind. Like people tell you all the time, go on a diet. Damn, you fat. Lose some weight. Eat the right foods. These, This is correct, right? But what about your brain? What are you putting in your mind? Are you watching his twerk videos? Are you watching his uh, love and hip hop? That's the that's your that's how your mentality is going to evolve, family. Put put positive shit in your brain. Like I was saying about Black History Month. Yeah, it's 28 days. Yeah, um you know, it 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 could be a little you know, say what you want to say about Black History Month, but use it as an opportunity to learn about your people. If you are the kind of person, if you are the kind of black person that never thought learning about our history was important, family, do yourself a service. Use this month to start. Learn about the people and places in our history. You can start by going to my website. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. The website is still being reconstructed. Go to my YouTube page, Melanated Fathers TV on YouTube. On this YouTube page, you can find the History Matters section. Start there. You know what I mean? Start with whoever you want, family, but you got to get the process started. That's the point. You know what I mean? All right, so. Enough for that story. Hopefully she goes to jail. Hopefully this sets a precedence because if she gets a slap on the wrist and that means absolutely nothing. You know what I mean? So, next news story. Now, oh, do you guys remember when the nine-year-old girl, right, Rochester police, and this was a couple weeks ago, Rochester in Rochester, New York, the police there handcuffed a nine-year-old girl and put her in the back of a police car. This was last month, actually. And, you know, um, I didn't talk about this news story when it came out. Honestly, it just slipped my mind. So much shit be happening to us that I didn't necessarily hone in on that one. But I'm bringing this story up today because reports have come out that, and this is something I've been telling you guys, right? Reports have come out that that police officers, an authority figure in 
authority figures in general tend to treat young children, young black children, like they are adults. They have in this article that they treat young black girls like adults, but I would argue that they treat all young black kids like they're uh, like they're adults, right? And one of the statements that stood out when the officer was putting her in the back seat before they pepper sprayed her, because they pepper sprayed this young girl, right? Before they pepper sprayed her, he put her in the back seat and he actually said, <laughs> he, shit ain't funny, man, but sometimes you gotta laugh to, to prevent from crying, right? So he said to the nine-year-old girl, you're acting like a child, right? She had to tell him, I am a damn child. You know what I mean? So this is just a microcosm of how our babies are viewed um, in this goddamn world. So let me read a little bit about this, uh, about this incident and the research they've done stating how black kids are treated, right? I thought it was pretty interesting. Now, black girls, and I think it's black boys too, actually, but it says black girls, researchers and advocates say, are often stripped of their innocence at a young age and perceived and treated like adults. The perception dehumanizes them and makes black girls targets of harsh treatment by police and severe disciplinary actions at school. Because we have to keep that in consideration. We've seen a few weeks ago when the officer, I think he was in Texas or wherever he was at, who slammed the, the young black girl in her face, right? So this is an idea. This gives us an idea of why stuff like that can happen. Because this is a kid. No white man is going to slam a 16-year-old white girl or a 15-year-old white girl in their face. You're, they're not going to do it. You know why? Because in their mind, that can be my daughter, right? That can be my niece, right? They don't see our kids the same way, family, and that's just the long and short of it. Now, a 2017 study conducted by the Georgetown Law Center on Poverty and Inequity found that black girls as young as age five years old are viewed as needing less protection in nurturing than white girls, right? This also goes to um, a few weeks ago when I was talking about the coronavirus and our fear of vaccines back in the day, there were studies that showed doctors felt like black people didn't feel as much pain as white people. You know what I mean? So we have a, a horrible system that has created all these ways to dehumanize us. And I think, for instance, when it comes like to police officers, right? I think, for one, police officers need to... Uh, patrol the areas that they're from. I think that's one of the biggest problems. Because last week I was speaking about how, excuse me, last week I was speaking about how, like what we can do to, to find out what cops are racist, right? If you have a police force full of, full of white officers, what steps can you take to see how they really feel about black people? So there, there needs to be shit ha happening like beyond like sensitivity training. You need to find out how you can actually, in my opinion, because people can lie or do whatever. But in my opinion, you can put together like a form where you can ask cops. You can figure out a way to ask cops how they feel about black people. And one of the telltale signs to me, if you, if you have a white officer in any state in America and they've never been around black people, meaning the high school they went to was all white or predominantly white, elementary school predominantly white, all of the school systems they've attended was predominantly white, they had never really lived in a neighborhood that was um, integrated, right? These are telltale signs that they may look at us a particular way. So if you have a black or a white man who's never been around nobody black his entire life, right? And the only time he is to conduct himself with us is when it's time to discipline us. When it's some, when it's some violence going on or when it's a crime be, that, that's occurring, right? I'll be honest. That's a horrible position to put somebody in who already has all of these preconceived notions about a particular person. You know what I mean? So maybe what should happen if, if you are going to have a white cop that's in an all-black neighborhood. And I've seen this before, but I don't know how serious they were about it. How about you take this cop and you put him in a black neighborhood, not when it's a crime happening. Just create a weekend where y'all barbecuing, right? And every cop that works in this neighborhood has to come to the barbecue, right? Every cop that works in this neighborhood has to come to the barbecue. He has to um, interact with the children, interact with the people in the community. I think one of the biggest advocates for racism as far as socially is concerned we don't not us people outside of our community aren't comfortable around us because they're never around us 
They're never around us. And if you're a cop and the first time you're around black people is when some shit's popping off, you're going to be quick to pull that gun out. Like I was saying last week, how we act as black people, like being African people, we loud. Sometimes we obnoxious. Sometimes we moving around a lot. If you ain't ever been around us, you're going to feel like some shit about to pop off. You know what I mean? And most of the time it's not. We talking loud and shit. We ain't about to hurt nobody. But you don't know this if you've never been around us. So it's important. Yep. So it's important that you find a way to humanize yourself. Like all the shit that go on with these cops in our community, we need to be honest, family. This is a race. These are race based activities, right? So a part of me says, well, a large part of me says, you a racist white man, fuck you. Like I don't got no time for any of that. If you can't educate yourself on the reality of who we are, because again, like I said last week, to hate somebody black, something gotta be wrong with you, man. We've been the victims in this country, right? Name the last time you seen a mass shooting by somebody black, right? Do research on all the mass shootings, all fucking white men, right? So in actuality, <laughs> you clutching your purse when you see me, I should be clutching my wallet, goddammit. <laughs> I, <should, laughs> I should be running away from you in actuality. Throughout history, we ain't really hurt nobody like that. You know what I mean? So this the, the story I was just reading was about the Rochester police officer who, who pepper sprayed the nine-year-old girl. Um, I love it too, Glenn, <laughs> that pepper sprayed the nine-year-old girl. And they, wrote, and they wrote an article about how young black people are criminalized and young black people are seen as adults in America. And I wanted to talk about this story because um, I've always been telling you guys that, right? Like that's, that's a part of the problem in this, uh, in this country. In Rochester police, before I finish this article, they came under fire several in May of 2020 for handcuffing a 10 year old girl during a traffic stop. Right? So a lot of times, you know what be happening family? When we look at particular cops who uh, have done us wrong, right? A, a particular cop who is, who have done us wrong. Most of the time, if you look in this motherfucker history, he didn't did it before, right? He didn't did it three, four five times, right? You see what I'm saying? So we live in a system, man, that I don't know how all of this is going to end. I, at times, I want to be as hopeful as possible about my the future for my children and my grandchildren. But goddamn, man, I don't know. I don't know. This country ain't trying hard enough to make changes, and that's my opinion. But what can we do as black folks? That always has to be your question, family. That always has to be your question. You're part of a race of people who have been disenfranchised, who have been stolen from their homeland. We are, they, that's why I don't use African American or black. These are like social constructs. Melanin is the true source of who we are, right? Because in actuality, if you want to be technical, excuse me, if you want to be technical about what you are, you should, they should have a box. <laughs> when you fill out paperwork, they should have a box that says stolen African or unknown African, right? We don't know, we don't, we don't know who the fuck we are, right? Let's look at it, man. Shit. <laughs> My last name is Anderson. That's a white. Who is that? Who is that? You see? So all of us should be crazy to a degree, right? When you look at the how we treat each other in our community, like this system has done a number on us. But step back and look at who we are, really. Asian people, they come from a home country. Arabian people, they come from a home country. All of these immigrants that have came here in the past 50, 60 years, all of them have a home country. All of them have said, well, I'm living is so fucked up, I'm going to go to America for a better opportunity, right? That's been the case in this country. Not us. We need to, not us. So we were a part of physically building this country. Physically, not like, not just some chip, I'm saying, we were a part of physically building this country and didn't get none of the rewards from it. None of it. And still get treated like shit. So we are rare. Like we have a specific set of circumstances in this country. And all of us should be aware of that. You know what I mean? So in Rochester, I don't know what this police force is going to do. But again, talking about these issues, they're still investigating the cop that pepper sprayed the nine-year-old girl. You know what I mean? And like I was saying last week, if this nine-year-old girl's father chose to be on some vigilante shit and find the man or woman who pepper sprayed his daughter. Could we, be, could we be mad at him? You know what I mean? Like, man, who wants violence, right? Like who wants a whole insurrection where it's hella violence and everybody dying, but what are we supposed to do? 
Like I said last week, violence begets violence. You can't get socked in your face and then move out the way. You can't get socked in your face and start crying. You can't get socked in your face and then shove a motherfucker. No. You're going to have to apply the same amount of force they applied to you. You know what I mean? So I ain't mad at none of that. We need to do something out here. All right. Next news story. What else did I want to talk about? Let me see. God damn it, I'm fired up. Treating our babies like that. Fuck these motherfuckers. That's how I feel about it. You feel me? That's how I feel about it. Because I'm black first, before everything else. KT, KT, I, uh, I seen your new video, family. That thing hard, man. Keep, keep more songs like that coming, bro. Like, you got a gift. As an MC, you got a gift, man. You got to keep shining your light on this, family. We need it. All right. Let's see. What else? That one. Oh, 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 oh. So, so, over the weekend, I seen, I seen three movies that I think everybody should watch for Black History Month. Even if it wasn't Black History Month, these are movies about our history that everybody should watch, right? Now, I'm going to try not to give spoilers. I'm going to try to just give like a synopsis of the movies and why they're important because let's first understand that movies about slavery, movies about our history, a lot of times shows us in like a hopeless, shiftless type of situation and it's really not worth seeing. Like it doesn't empower you, doesn't make you feel good, just make you feel mad and you want to go hurt somebody white. You know what I mean? <laughs> and at this point... It's 2021, like I'm tired of the butlers and all these slave movies, right? Me too. However, I seen three movies, family, that I, because I was watching them, like, all right, is this some bullshit? I'm always expecting like a white savior. I'm always expecting something that at the end of the day shows that we needed to be saved by somebody white, ultimately, right? So it's three movies that I want you to watch that are all based on true stories, right? So the first movie is a movie called The 24th, right? The 24th, and this is a true story. The 24th is based around the Houston riots of 1917. And the 24th was a, 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 a melanated military regiment that's called the 24th. They were in Houston, Texas. And basically they were, how can I put it? They were scheduled to do their training in Houston, Texas in the middle of like a race a riot like the re the residents the white residents in Houston, Texas was in the process of killing black folks they were in the process of of doing whatever they could to disenfranchise the the black citizens and then these black uh these these black military guys come to town and things begin to change a little bit right so the one of the primary characters who's a light skinned brother I'm not sure of his actual name but he did a great job because he was basically a light skinned brother who was able to speak well right so they showed the level of colorism that was taking place at that time because he was a light skinned brother he spoke well so the dark skinned brothers that was on the platoon they treated him a certain way thinking he was an uncle tom thinking he was you know what I mean they had to get through that but ultimately the brother was a rider and what happened was um this the the 24th platoon they were in world war one and they were looking to go to um they were looking to go to france to actually fight in the war because they were black they weren't allowed to fight in the war and what happened was they had an incident inside of the houston town they were at and then all the all the white folks from this houston town went to the um went to the military base and was trying to kill everybody right these black brothers strapped up and did what they had to do they was killing off whoever. They went into town and was killing off whoever they needed to kill, uh, uh, kill off. It was a great... This is based on a true story. And again, I'm not advocating violence. I'm just advocating fighting back. You know what I mean? So when we talk about um, um, slave movies and movies that depict us in a particular manner, just know that this is one of the movies that we should watch. This is one of the movies that you should actually watch with your, uh, with your family because it shows like what it takes when... You put your people first, you know what I mean? And one of the, the can't, can't remember the brother's name, but he's a light-skinned brother. He was a star in the movie. He did a great job. And he said a statement in the movie that was probably the most profound thing that I've heard in a while, right? Because he found a girl there that liked him. And he asked the girl, or the girl asked him, 
Like, why is this so important to you? Like, why do you want to fight in, in, in this war? Like, aren't you scared to fight? You know what I mean? And he basically said a statement, man, I think all of us should live by to a degree, right? The brother basically said that if you die fighting for revolution, you never die at all. You know what I mean? And that, and that was a in that was a powerful statement to me because the brother was basically saying, I understand that I might die in this war. Because in his mind, if we show, and I don't like this ideology to a degree, but I understand them. He was like, if we show these white folks we can go over here and be great at our job, be great in the military, then next time it's time to go to war, black folks will be accepted. Black folks will be able to have a seat at the table. A proverbial seat at the table. You know what I mean? And again, I don't agree with that ideology completely, but the brother was basically saying, I'm willing to, to die to advance the next group of black people that come after me. You know what I mean? And I think that was, if you watch the movie, that's the main point of the movie. So do me a favor, family, with your family. You got kids. It's not a lot of, it's a little profanity in the movie, but not like that. If you got kids, watch the 24th. I think it's on. Showtime or stars if I'm not mistaken. It's on Hulu as well. So for Black History Month everybody who just joined me watch a movie called the 24th. It's a great movie about black history. It's a True story. You know what I mean? So do me a favor and watch the 24th the 24th the next movie Let me see that's everything I have to say about that one. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great movie for black history the next movie I did a post well, I did a post about that movie as well, but I did a post about this movie also um and I think we should go see it. I think everybody who hasn't seen it yet should go check it out. And the movie is Judas and the Black Messiah. Now, many people in our community was telling me, like, man, look, I don't want to see a movie about a snitch. I would love to see uh, Fred, Hamp Fred Hampton's story in a, in, a in a biography about his life. I would love to see that. But I don't want to see no shit about no snitch. They always paint us in these bad, blah, 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 right? And okay. I guess I understand that to a degree, right? But here's the thing, family. Not only did this movie, um, not only did this movie depict the Black Panthers in a great light that we haven't seen them in before, like I was telling my son when I was making his ass watch it, <laughs> which that was a good thing, right? And also, like, look, if we are to unite as a people, right? Let's say we, we want to start some type of revolution where as black people we come together and we fight with our minds or whatever we have to do to get through oppression like together right if you want to start an organization and do these kind of things you have to get rid of snitches y'all like the the informant the the black man or woman who chose who chooses to thwart our plans by telling the oppressor this has been going on since the beginning of time Right. So understand that uh, we need to hear this story about how this organization got took down so we can look at it and determine what could have been done differently. So if we start an organization or we are a part of an organization, we'll know how to move. Right. But understand, right. During slavery time, this is something I'm always I did a video about this. Melanated Fathers TV. History Matters section. I did a whole video about it. But this is something we need to be aware of, family like. Many of you have watched First 48, right? And you understand how, what is it? I would say 90 fucking 94% of the time somebody snitching on somebody, right? So understand where this comes from. That's why history is so important to me. During slavery, there was something called, there was something created called meritorious manumission. Look it up. Or like I said, go watch my video on my um, YouTube page. But meritorious manumission. This was basically a reward system they created for slaves if you told on another slave, right? This is extremely important. Family, uh, mid to late 1800s to early 1900s, there were hundreds of slave revolts that were forted for one reason. Hundreds of slave revolts that didn't get to happen for one reason and one reason only. A snitch somebody told meritorious manumission was in effect and you are a slave amongst these broken people and you want to find the best way to get in good graces with with massa right so keep in mind they didn't give them money or nothing 
They will give them like a small amount of time, a time off. But the biggest thing they will give them <laughs> is, I hate laughing at some of this shit, man, but we didn't been through so much. The biggest thing that they would give them is a butter biscuit. A hot, <laughs> believe, <laughs> believe it, the, 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 the main re reward that they would get for snitching is a hot butter biscuit, right? So, uh, so understand this. So during those times, we would do whatever we could do to get one leg up on somebody else black. So keep in mind, as time continued to go on, we continued to be the most disenfranchised people in this country, right? So at that point, you're doing whatever you can to get a leg up. Like, my life is all fucked up. I ain't got no money. I ain't got no resources. I ain't got nothing. All I got to do is tell on him, and I can get put in a better standing. You know what I mean? In the society, that, in the society that's already shitting on me already. You know what I mean? So, yes, everybody, watch Judas in The Black Messiah so we can know how to avoid fucking Judas, right? <laughs> we, <laughs> we need to be aware of that, family. We need to be aware of that. We definitely need to be aware of that, of how all this works. You know what I mean? So I watched the movie. I had my family watch the movie. I think it's worth it. Um, you know, I don't want to tell too many spoilers. Most of us understand what actually happened to, to Fred Hampton, but it was good to see the brother's story, see how much influence he had. And another thing, before I move on to the next story, let me see, do I have one more story? I think that's it, family. But before I move on, keep, keep this in mind too. Haiti had one of the only successful revolts right in Haiti I'll leave you with this one of the only places to have a that's why just so you know that's why Haiti is treated so horrible now because when they won that war all the powers around the world never forgot about it so they made sure that we're not going to send no resources to Haiti whatsoever everybody was aware of that right but you know what Haiti did how they were able to take down the French tank that take down all these different fractions of, uh, of soldiers without guns, right? For one, they practice voodoo. Like voodoo in America is seen as some old, excuse me, voodoo in America is seen as some old demonic shit, but in actuality, it's about African spirituality. Excuse me, and they used voodoo to garner up the energy from the ancestors to do what they, to do what they needed to do. And also, before they killed anybody white, <laughs> before they killed any slave owner or anything, the first thing they did was got rid of the coons. First thing they did was identify who are the traitors among us, and they got rid of all them first. Like, and, and man, look, if we are to talk about a real revolution here in this country where we come together as melanated folks, black folks, whatever you want to call yourself, if we are to see this actually come to fruition, Unfortunately, fortunately, but unfortunately, we gonna have to get rid of all the goddamn coons, man. Everybody who doesn't mean us any good, everybody who could be a potential detractor, you gotta get rid of them. Now, how you get rid of them? Depends on how thorough you wanna be, but that has to happen, you know what I mean? So, at the end of the day, watch the movie, Judah and Black Messiahs, learn something. It is a, his now again, with these movies, they have the license to do do things up for Hollywood so bits and pieces may be a little dramatized to a degree but ultimately it's a great movie I think everybody should watch it you feel me now on to how long have I been running my mouth let's see on to the topic for the day family let's get it in so again a brother asked me let me pull this up so I can know what the hell I'm talking about so a brother asked me after my last show, last show I was talking about how young men need to be um, followers, I'm sorry, leaders and not followers when it comes to being in a gang, when it comes to participating in street activity in your environment. It, should be, it shouldn't be seen as something you have to do. You know what I mean? You should be able to think bigger than that. You should be able to think of being a lawyer or an engineer or not a rapper and all. You know what I mean? So thinking bigger when you have a child that's in a hood environment, right? So he asked me, he was like, look, man, I'm, you know, I wanna, I'm dating, and I wanna know how do I date, how do I deal with women who didn't have a father, right? And I was like, damn, that's, that's some deep shit. That's, that's a thing <laughs> that I don't think we, 
consider when we ask them questions about the, the person and determining we want to be with them and we're kind of getting to know them. It's not often that we talk about these type of topics, right? And again, I was th I was thinking about it when the brother asked me to talk about this. I was like, wait a minute. So yeah, as a man, it may be difficult dating um, a woman that don't ha that didn't have a father. But what if you didn't have a father, right? So we need to deal with this from that perspective. Like, we if you are, we'll look at it from both directions, right? If you're a man and you had two parents in your home, you had a stable two home environment. Um, in this environment, it helped you with a few things, right? You were able to see your parents communicate. You were able to see how um, things get divvied up, like who handles what, right? And this, again, if you're in a stable home environment, these are some things that you're looking at, right? Like how things get divvied up, um, who handles what, how the man speaks to the woman, what type of love is being transferred. You're watching all these things, right? Now, if you find a woman that you love or a woman that you into and you want to be in a relationship with her, you, you, you have to have the conversation with her if she never had a dad in her house, right? Because if she never had a father in the house, then there's some things she may not be used to looking at. She may not know how to communicate when things get tough inside of the home. She may not know who does what, right? Like who should do this thing? Who should do that thing? She may not be aware of these things, right? She may not be aware of how to handle situations when things get tough. When you guys are in the house together and things aren't going right, how is she going to handle that, right? She doesn't have any, she doesn't have a tool belt, so to speak, to deal with these things. So I think one of the first things you should do if you're a man, and this is this, and I'll go to a different situation here in a minute, but if, and, and women can apply this same thing. If you're a man and you are dating a woman that never had a father or didn't have a father growing up, you have to sit down and talk to her about particular things. Okay, how did your mom do this? Who did this in your household? Who did that in your household? Find out how she lived in the home specifically. So before you guys even move together, you'll have a clear picture of what she didn't see, right? You'll have a clear picture of what she didn't see, what she did see, and you can then trade notes. Like, you know what? I was in a two-parent home, and this is how things happen in my home. You see what I'm saying? Then you guys can, because I think when two people are in a relationship, the, base, the best way to address how to handle anything is honestly removing tradition. Like, remove anything that's going on outside of the house. You guys should honestly be able to create your own traditions. You create what works for you. If marriage works, do it. If it don't work, don't do it. You know what I mean? Like, you create what works for you. When you listen to people outside of your house telling you about how to handle your relationship, that shit is never going to work for you. It should be based on the two people in the situation. You know what I mean? So if you're a dude and you have a woman that didn't have a father in her house, you got to sit her down and have a conversation with her. You got to sit down and ask her, well, how did this happen in your house? Who took care of this in the house? Was there an uncle or some kind of man that stepped in, right? And then from there, you can begin to see like her sensibilities. And the same thing for when, the, the same thing happens for when, let's say you a man and you didn't have a dad, Right? This is even worse. Like if it's two, <laughs> if it's two people who were raised with just a mom, y'all got to sit down and craft how you're going to live your life together because neither, neither one of you know what to do. Like that's some, you need to be aware if you were raised in a home with just one parent, there's going to be a lot of shit you don't know how to do when it comes to dealing with, when it comes to coming together with another person and working in the home together, like communicating and doing things as a team. You may not be a fucking good teammate <laughs> if you're not used to seeing a team. You see what I'm saying? So if you're a dude and you don't have a, you didn't have a father either, I think it's extreme. Y'all need to sit down and say, okay, fuck what we were told. Fuck what people around us are doing. Let's sit here and decide who's going to do what based on who we are, right? Based on our strengths and based on our weaknesses. Couples should be doing this anyway. But I think, again, family, if there was no father in a home, this should be addressed. We get so used to... Um, we get so used to the trauma that's been placed on us by this system and by our families, we don't even see it fit to have conversations about it. We don't even see it like something's wrong. You know what I mean? I'm not saying something is wrong with you, family, but being raised in a one-parent home, there's something wrong with that. 
There's a level of dysfunction that comes with that. Can't nobody tell me nothing different. Now, granted, you may have had an uncle that came around a lot. You may have had a cousin who helped you when it came to like um, what he considered manhood was and how he can help you progress in that area, right? But if you didn't live with a man and a woman that was in a relationship in your home, there's things you're going to struggle with, right? So first... Like I was saying before, as men, even women, but I'm talking to my fellows out here, you got to humble yourself and you got to approach the situation from a, a, a perspective. OK, I don't know what to do. Like it's bigger than just taking out the garbage and shit. Like what is what is my actual role in the home as the man? Again, I know what society says a man is and you can take those traditional roles if you want to and that may work for you but in actuality i think if we're talking about a long-term relationship where you want to be with somebody you want to have a loving relationship you want that shit to last for a long time one of the first things you may want to do is throw out all traditions now you guys may decide some of these traditions fit your relationship style you may decide that but you may not. So I say, throw it all out and then come back. Decide, okay, we're going to do this? Are we going to celebrate holidays? Are we going to get married? Do we believe in actually getting married? Do we, we want to get a business license and, and make our relationship a business? Maybe we want to. Maybe we don't. These are things we got to look at. Who's going to handle finances? Who's, who's better at it? Right? Who's going to work on things in the house? Who's better at it? Right? Like, it's a, it's a thing that has to happen between two people. But the bottom line is, and I want to make sure I cover everything I have here. And the bottom line is, if we all are looking to have like a stable environment where our where our kids can prosper, and and as a man we can we can make sure um, our woman is happy and she's fulfilled, we have to get an understanding of what she's used to, right? And of the biggest part of that, not necessarily used to as far as relationships are concerned but her household family if she was raised in a traumatic ass household like a lot of black folks are where it was just a grandma and it was no then that's not going to be worse for you but that's more that you should be addressing if y'all was raised because i know people who one person was raised by the grandma the other person was like in uh, uh, uh foster care and all this kind of shit these are traumatic upbringings when when kids are born and they don't have parents right this is traumatic family and if you don't humble yourself and realize this you will bring that trauma into any new relationship that you go in relationship with a woman relationship with a boss relationship with your kids whatever that may be right and i want to read y'all some statistics here about fatherlessness in our community and how it affects us. Now, this is for everybody. This is black and white, right? So if a kid, and this is from the, where did I get this information? This is from the fatherhood.org website. And it shows here that if a kid grows up in a house, and some of us knew this already, but this is important for us to understand, right? If a kid grows up in a house without a father, they're four times greater risk of poverty, more likely to have behavioral problems, two times greater risk of infant mortality, more likely to go to prison, of course, more likely to commit a crime, seven times more likely to become pregnant as a teen. Let me repeat that. Seven times more likely to become pregnant as a teen. Wow, family, right? So this is for all my fathers out there, all my fathers to be out there here is the reason why we need to be in our kids lives family here's why your presence can mean the difference between your kid going to college and your kid stripping on a goddamn pole like that's real you know what i mean so more likely to face abuse and neglect more likely to abuse drugs and alcohol two times more likely to suffer obesity two times more likely to drop out of high school so these statistics are basically saying kids who don't have fathers in the home are fucked Kids who don't have fathers in the home, if they do become successful in a well-rounded person, you got lucky. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? That's why it was so important for me, my organization, Melanated Fathers of America, understanding that as a black man, I have five kids. I have four before the age of 23 with two different women. I did this shit in an extremely sloppy manner. I was going back and forth between. I, I was doing shit all the wrong way, right? So... I need to come to grips with that. I need to say, okay, this is what I did 
how do I prevent my kids from going through the same thing, right? And, and really, until recently, I'm going to be honest, as a man, as a father, I don't think I did a good enough job of reflecting on them what I did wrong in my life so they can see that as a learning tool and do things a little bit differently. You know what I mean? Because two of my older kids have children already. And, excuse me, I feel two ways about that. Of course, excuse me, family. Excuse me, of course, a new life is a blessing. New life in any form is a blessing. First, we always have to say that, right? But I'm a realist too. And I understand that if a kid is born without two parents in the home, if a kid is born without the proper resources, they're going to have an extremely hard time in life. They're going to have to go through obstacles and um, turmoil that they wouldn't have to, or the turmoil could have been lessened if the approach was different. So even though these are my children, I'm going to tell any man, don't have a kid until you're financially stable, at least a little. Don't have a kid until you know the woman that you're with is the woman that you want to be with, right? Like if you know this person after a year, a year and a half, two years, in my opinion, this ain't enough time to talk about building a family with them, right? Like it's all of our responsibility to impute this kind of wisdom on our children so they can understand like just having kids ain't what you're supposed to do. You don't just supposed to be having kids all willy-nilly out here in these streets. Having a kid over here, having a kid over there, we should be trying our best to build families. Now granted, things happen. Even the people who planned it the best, shit still happened with them. So with knowing that, for us who didn't plan it at all, you kind of hoping things end up the right way for you. You know what I mean? So, look, family, dating or being in a relationship with somebody who didn't have a dad, growing up without a father, this is traumatic. Now, granted, a lot of us end up doing good, having nice jobs, figuring out our father wasn't there, so we want to be there. I know a lot of men who take that pain into their new situation and use it as fuel. You know what I mean? And that's what you're supposed to do. But let's be honest about the psychology of all of this, right? I'm cuz I'm I've been with women who was only raised with their mother, right? And I've been with women who had two parents in the home, two stable parents in the home. And when I tell you family, it's a night and day different. Now, women, <laughs> sometimes women going to be crazy any goddamn way, no matter if they had a dad or a mother in the house. But a woman's temperament when she had a father in the house, um, a woman's understanding of how things works when she had a father in the house, a woman's reliance on you when it comes to certain things when they had a father in the house, there's a higher level of expectation when she had a father in the house. That's just the bottom line. If you would a woman who ne who didn't have a dad in the house, you have a lot of responsibility on your hands because unfortunately you're a man, quote unquote, but she has no idea how a man looks. Feel me when I say that. If you're in a relationship with a woman who didn't have a father, who didn't have any strong male influences around her, she doesn't really know how a man looks. You can be a piece of shit and she can think you're the man. You can be a piece of shit and she can think, oh my God, this guy is the greatest. You know what I mean? Why? Because she, she hasn't had an example of what a man is supposed to be. So as a man, I think that's a big responsibility. And I know dudes, I even, when I was younger, I would take advantage of this. I'm, I'm ashamed to admit, but I would take advantage of the fact that this woman, obviously, and I didn't know it was a daddy issue when I was a teenager. I was just like, damn, this woman clings to me. She clings on to my every word. Um... She, she, she really believes what I say to a high degree. Her self-esteem doesn't seem to be all there. I didn't know what I was looking at, right? Until I was around one woman, and I'll never say her name or anything, but I was around one woman who, um, shit, how can I put it? Really loved me, really loved being around me, loved my dirty draws, always calling me, always on my, always on my ass to a degree, right? I was bringing her through shit at the time, but she was always on my ass. We was trying to figure things out. Her dad came to town. Her father came to town, right? For this two weeks, maybe, that her father was in town, she didn't even call me. She ignored me. Like, she had this, how can I put it? She had this fucking, she had this confidence about her that I didn't recognize. Then, I didn't know what was going on. I was like, what the hell? This bitch didn't bump her head or shit. She's talking to me like I'm shit. She ain't answering my calls. You know what I mean? <laughs> I didn't know what I was looking at, right? 
as I got older, I realized, oh, because when her father left, she cried for weeks, right? I still didn't get it. Like, damn, it's just your dad. You say you love him. You got a relationship with him. What's the problem? Well, kids need their dad to be present. Like, you can have a father who lives in a different state. He can send you money, and he can talk to you all the time, and you can know he loves you, but it's nothing like having a father in the house. It's nothing like having a father that you can grab that's close to you. You know what I mean? And especially for little girls, if they don't have a dad around, they don't know what they're looking for, family. So if you a father out there with a little girl, it's, it's tough for boys too, but if you're a father of a little girl and you're not there, you're, you're going to make it extremely hard for her when it comes to time, when it comes time for her to date, right? When it comes time for her to find the man that she want to be with, she's not going to know what she's looking for, family. So it's our job as men, especially men with daughters, set the precedence for the kind of dude you want your daughter to be with. You see what I'm saying? Because if you a dude with a daughter and you out here in these streets and she see you, she going to end up fucking with a dude just like you, family. Believe it or not. But if you show her something different, if you show her that you respect women, if you show her that you respect her, if you treat her a certain way on a Valentine's Day or on her birthday or bring her out to eat, if you do things for her to show her, I'm putting you on a pedestal and any man that come behind me got to do the same thing, you'll have a better opportunity of having a young lady that has a solid foundation. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So that's important, family. That's something that we always need to look at. To my brother who was asking me to talk about this, I hope that was sufficient enough for you, family. We can continue the conversation if you want to. But the bottom line is, if you are dating someone who does not have a father, a conversation needs to happen. If both of y'all didn't have a father, a real big conversation needs to happen about what you are used to, about what happens in a household. As a man, look, fellas, don't be afraid to know, I don't know what a man's supposed to do. Don't be afraid to, to start there, family. If you didn't have a man in your house, how the fuck do you know what a man is supposed to Now, you can, like I said, you can go by the traditional man. I'm supposed to work on things. I'm supposed to fix stuff when it breaks. I'm supposed to dump the garbage. You can look at these traditional roles of a man and use some of this. But what about emotionally, right? How are you supposed to act emotionally in the home? How you, psychologically, how are things supposed to pan out in your home? You know what I mean? Because some of us, only growing up with a mom, we are overly emotional. And I'm talking to myself now, too. Like, men can agree with it or, or, or admit to it or not. I know for a fact, <laughs> for some of us, if you grew up and the only person you heard of authority, the only person you heard, you, uh, you heard talking was your mom, when she's upset, when she's happy, if this is the only person you're around speaking... When you get upset, when you get happy, you may sound like your damn mama. Now, this ain't a horrible thing, family. We just have to be aware of how we was raised here in this country. And if you want to unpack these things and do things differently, like the first part of changing is admitting there's a problem. Got it? So do me a favor, fellas. You dating a girl who didn't have a father, you didn't have one, do your due diligence on, on, on what you didn't see in the home. And then go back and say, okay, how would I handle that? How should I handle that? So that I want your woman to have a conversation about it. Because we say communication is important and all that, but a lot of times we don't be communicating the way we need to. You feel me? So this has been another episode, man, of the Melanated Combo Podcast. I want to thank everybody who tuned in and chimed in and was in here talking with me. I definitely appreciate it. Please go to the Melanated Fathers TV YouTube page. Subscribe to the YouTube page. Everything will be going through the YouTube page for now. on. It will be Melanated Fathers TV on YouTube. The website, Melanated Fathers, is being reconstructed. It's going to look a little bit different. I'll have my shirts and the products that I'm going to sell on there. Um, the, the, the podcast will be on there. I'll have links to everything that I'm doing. So again, I appreciate everybody watching the show. It's been another episode of the Melanated Convo podcast. Do me a favor too, man. Share this video, like this video, tell your friends about it. This has been another episode of the show, man. I'm out.